So when it comes to building out web applications, one of the things that you should probably learn is how to define your data models as an ER diagram to help visualize how your stuff all kind of relates to each other. So to help me explain an ER diagram, let's first look at a really simple application. This is a web app where people can go and submit video ideas after they've logged in. So we'll go over here and I'll say a video about um, use transition. I want to learn more about React. And when a user submits this idea, we auto tag it and we add a bunch of tags to this idea. But then also authenticated users can come through and they can upvote, or I guess you could say like or dislike any of these ideas so they'll get put to the top of the list. And that's basically the app. But even something as simple as this can be a little complicated for a beginner to understand how the data is stored in a relational database what tables might you need? How do the relationships kind of work? So the point of this video is I'm gonna break down this application and show you how to build out an entity relationship diagram using some of the tables that we use to build out this application. So the first main feature you saw in that demo was the ability for a user to create an idea. Okay, so we have to have some type of idea table. And typically with entity relationship diagrams, you have like table rectangles and you'll have the properties that you're gonna be storing on that table inside of this uh, table definition. So I'm gonna just give it an ID of, of a string. We'll give it a you know title, we'll give it some content, and also we wanna track the user who uploaded this. So I'll just give it a user ID, okay? And for the most part, we'll keep these all as strings to keep it simple. But another table that we'll probably need is when you create an account and log in, we probably wanna track the user. So again, we'll get like a ID for the user, Maybe we'll have their name, like Web Dev Cody or whatever. So now that we have these two tables defined, we need to define a relationship between them. And there's different types of relationships. The ones that you have probably heard are one-to-one, -one, there's one-to-many, and there's many-to-many. -many. There's also many-to-one, but honestly, like it, it's kind of just like the inverse of one-to-many. So if those are our three main options, what type of relationship do we think would exist between a user table in an idea table. Well, if you just they say it out loud, a user can create multiple ideas, okay? So that's one user can create multiple ideas. So I would assume that this is gonna be a one to many. So I'm gonna say user.ide, and then I'll say idea.userid to map those. One user, and typically you denote this with a one here and then a star for the many, can have many ideas. Now, another piece of functionality that we saw was the ability to upvote on an idea. So one user can upvote many different ideas in the system, right? So let's go and say upvote. Could that be another table name? Maybe. We'll give it an ID. We'll give it a user ID to track who upvoted this thing or who liked it. And then we also want to track the idea ID so that we know which one of these rows they actually clicked on. Okay, so again, let's look at the relationship. How many upvotes or how many likes can a single user do? They can do many of them. So we're gonna say user.id and then we'll say upvote user ID. One user can have many upvotes. Now we gotta create a relationship between the upvote table and an idea, okay? So an idea can have many upvotes. So again, we'll say idea ID can have many upvotes. Um, we'll say idea ID over here. Okay, so one idea can have many upvotes. A user can have many upvotes. Now let's keep on building upon this, right? The next thing was the ability to have tags. So in this application, a tag is shared amongst ideas. So like, for example, if there's many ideas that are related to React, there's probably gonna be a React tag, which gets used by many ideas. So again, we should probably add a tag table. So we'll go over here and we'll add a tag table, which will have an ID and then also maybe a name on it. And then also we're gonna create something called a join table. Um, there's different names for it. I like to call it a join table, but somehow you have to relate a idea to these tags that are kind of shared amongst the system. So this one's a little bit different. This is a many to many relationship. If you think about it, how many ideas can a tag have? Well, if we go look at the UI, we have a React tag somewhere, and it can belong to many ideas, right? So we have a one-to-many in that direction. 
one tag can belong to many ideas. But then if you go and look at the other direction, one idea, it can have many tags, right? You can have up to three or five or seven tags. So in this case, this makes sense to be a many to many relationship. And often when you have a many to many relationship, you need something called a join table. So there's a nomenclature you typically use. You can say like idea tag table like this. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but this is the idea. You're basically creating this table that sits in between these two tables. So you can kind of track the relationship with a many to many. So I'll give this an ID. Um, I'll also give it an idea ID, and then I'll give it a tag ID. Okay, now technically this is gonna be a composite key. So like, does this really need a primary ID? Probably not, but I like to just add them to all my tables just because. Okay, so again, how does this kind of work? Again, we're gonna have a many to many. And the way you kind of designate that is you're going to have a relationship where one tag can belong to many tag ideas. So let's say tag ID can belong to an idea tag ID, uh, tag ID, sorry, I'm getting kind of confused here. Uh, so this is a one here, and this has a star next to this join table. And then the same thing with the idea. So we're gonna say idea dot ID, idea tag dot idea ID. Okay, you guys confused yet? Because I'm definitely confusing myself. So again, we have an idea tag, which is a join table between an idea and a tag table. And the way this kind of works is if you think about it, an idea can have many of these idea tag entries associated with it, okay? So like, again, an idea can have five different idea tags on it, and the tag can have many idea tags. So kind of like through this join table, it's really a many to many, which I guess technically, I'm not sure if the nomenclature is to convert this to a star two, um, but I'm pretty sure this is the, how you kind of do it. And by the way, this thing is also called a junction table. I just went and looked it up uh, with AI, and it does say it's called a junction table as well. I like to call it a join table, but I think a junction table is fine. And if we were to look at the many-to-many -many relationship, you'll see that an idea table has a one-to-many with idea tags, and a tag has a one-to-many with idea tags. And through this junction table, it basically becomes a many-to-many -many relationship. Now, sometimes this approach can be a little bit confusing by even showing the junction table. I have seen ER diagrams basically emit these to keep it a little bit cleaner. And you kind of just implicitly know that there's a junction table or a join table between these two things. So we could basically go from idea directly to tag, um, which I believe I can say idea dot ID, and then we'll say tag dot idea ID. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to actually like drag this thing down. So use your imagination. I believe the star to star is your many to many, and it's connecting the idea to the tag. This one, ignore it. The one is still representing this line right here. And then I guess we could just go ahead and delete the idea tag table up there. But I think this represents our schema accurately. Leave a comment below if there's something I messed up. But yeah, just understanding this, basically creating your tables, creating your relationships can help visualize how all your data kind of interconnects. And eventually, when you get to a very large code base, you can have hundreds and hundreds of these things that are all interconnected. And the relationships can become very, very complex, which is why it's good to understand this now from a really small project perspective, because as you keep adding features and adding new tables, it just starts to blow up in complexity. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this little overview. Have a good day and happy coding.